Hello and welcome. In this video I will talk about and show you the alterations I made to these power amplifiers. But before we start, please note, if you decide to perform the alterations I did, do you do it at your own risk? No one else can be held responsible for your actions. And this is with regard to any harm to person or property, so you're really on your own. And let's start by having a look at the amplifiers. These power amplifiers are made by Swedish company XTZ and the name is Edge A2300 and they are working in class D and they are power amplifiers only. They can be used as stereo amplifiers or as monoblocks. At the front of the amplifiers you will be able to see an indicating light. Red for standby or green meaning active. So let's go to the rear and see what we find there. Here we see the rear of the amplifier. From the left we have the mains in with power on and off. Next input left and right for the interconnect and then we have a gain setting. And then further to the right we have the binding posts for connecting the BT cables. And below we have two switches. The left one is for stereo or mono so you can use the amplifier as a stereo amplifier or as a mono block. The right switch is auto on or always on. When using the auto on it means that if the amplifier is inactive for approximately 8 minutes it will go down into standby and once you start to play again it will be activated. When using the amplifier as a stereo amplifier you will connect your right hand speaker to the right hand terminals on the amplifier and of course the left hand speaker to the left hand terminals on the amplifier. To take the full advantage of these amplifiers as mono blocks, you really need to be able to have B wiring system to your speakers. Otherwise you really don't make the best out of them. And when you're B wiring these amplifiers, one channel is for the subwoofer and the other channel is for mid-range and tweeter so you really have a proper B wiring system. From my understanding is that you have out of the amplifier 2 times 150 watts and that means 150 watts to the subwoofer and 150 watts to the mid-range and tweeter. These pair of amplifiers I've used as monoblocks only from the very start. I used them for in excess of 100 hours before making the following alterations and they really need to be burnt in for at least 100 hours before you can say anything about the performance. So let's have a look at the equipment I used to perform the alterations to the amplifiers. What you need is a good soldering iron, soldering wire, flux, an instrument to show the voltage and the resistance, mainly to indicate possible shortcuts, and then wire cutters, pocket knife, screwdriver, and a small light and a magnifying glass. And again, once you've started to work on the amplifiers, you're on your own. So if you're not confident about how to go about the process, leave it or contact somebody who is knowledgeable about electronics. Now let's have a look at the alterations I've done to the amplifiers. To be able to perform these alterations, you have to remove the covers of the amplifiers. And the cover is held in place by means of six screws. With the cover removed, the inside of the amplifier looks like this. Fortunately, these amplifiers are very easy to work on, so there's no problem to remove the four boards that are located inside the chassis. Start by removing the two following terminals. This one for power in. And this one is for the lights in the front of the amplifier. And then you have to remove all the screws that secure the boards to the chassis. You have three boards located on the bottom of the chassis and a smaller fourth board that is secured to the rear of the binding posts. It is held by means of a small screw and also by four nuts. You just have to remove these. And also don't forget a small screw on the rear of the amplifier. It is located directly to the left of the gain setting. With the screws removed, it's very easy to remove all the four boards at one time. If you have two amplifiers, only dismantle one of them so that you can use the second one for reference when assembling them again. In this type of application, 
I'm not a big fan of mechanical terminals. And that is based on the experience I have from soldering the interconnects directly into my CD player and turntable, where the sonic improvement was very encouraging. On this amplifiers, I started by substituting the mechanical terminals on the wires that goes from the amplifying boards to the small board that is located at the rear of the binding terminals for the speaker cables. After testing the amplifier with these modifications, the sonic improvement was so encouraging that I decided to continue to remove and substitute the mechanical terminals with solderings on the terminals where I can find two or three wires. This is what it looks like when I have soldered the wires directly to the boards. I have removed parts of the plastic walls surrounding the terminals on the boards. Also I have cut the wires from the female part of the terminals so that I can solder the wires to the terminals. And of course it's possible to continue to remove the mechanical terminals where you have more than three wires. But for me it was a bit difficult to perform the soldering so I, I let them be as is. After soldering the wires to the terminals, I have cleaned the solderings with a bit of red spirit before applying liquid rubber to the solderings for insulating purposes. With all alterations performed, it's time to install the boards into the chassis and test the amplifier. Fortunately, these amplifiers are very easy to work on, so this type of alteration is very easy to perform. What it takes is skill regarding soldering, time and patience. So, with the job done and the alterations complete, it's time for the assembly. Please note that as I'm using two of these amplifiers, I only altered one at a time. And after assembling the altered amplifier, I installed them into the hi-fi system to make sure that the altered am amplifier really was working. Here we have the boards and they are of course going to be assembled into the chassis. And before you do the final assembly, make absolutely certain that all the wires are soldered into the correct places. If you have a second amplifier at hand, you can of course compare the wiring with this one. And if you're working with an amplifier in stereo mode, you have to refer to your photos or notes regarding how the original wiring was performed. When you have formed the inspection regarding the, the wiring, don't forget to attach the power supply and the wire that is connected to the front LEDs on the amplifier. And with these wires in place, it's time to reinstall the covers. Always have the covers on when you are going to use them in your system. So here we have the amplifiers, one that is altered and one that is in its original state. With the amplifiers connected to the hi-fi system, I made sure that the altered one sounded all right and I let the system run for about two days to verify the function of the altered amplifier. And then I removed them and performed the alteration on the second amplifier. So far I haven't had any problem at all with the amplifiers as the alterations are fairly simple. With the power amplifiers connected back into the system, the question is of course, What's the difference before and after the alteration? And I can only talk about my own system and the differences I have noticed. The difference after the alteration is clearly audible. The sound stage has improved quite a lot and also the general impression of the sound and the 3D impression. Another difference that was almost more noticeable was that before the alteration when playing a CD, the volume was set at about 30. After the alteration I had to turn it down to 20 and when listening to an LP before the alteration the volume was set at approximately 45 and after the alteration I had to reduce it to 30. It's a reduction of uh, one third. Otherwise talking about differences or improvements in the hi-fi system is very individual and it's extremely difficult to say that the improvement is plus or minus a certain amount of percent. It is definitely worth the effort to make the alterations to these power amplifiers. As these are the power amplifiers, I need a preamp and I'm using a Primar SPA21 integrated power amplifier. As there is the possibility to have a pre-out, I'm only using the pre-amplifier and also I'm using it as a DAC. To avoid a lot of heat buildup from the power amplifier, 
I removed all the TAM fuses that are associated with a power amplifier in this unit. Above the power amplifiers I have a CD player. It is a French YBA Passion. I've converted it into a transport only, so the lower section I don't use anymore. There's only the power supply to the anal analog side of the CD player. As you can see, I have the interconnect going directly into the player and it's connected to the outgoing digital signal. The reason for this is that when I compared the sonic performance between the analog output and using the DAC in the preamp, I noticed that the preamp's DAC far outperformed the DAC in the CD player. Transformer has been shielded with copper and grounded. And here you can see how I have introduced the signal cable. As a turntable, I'm using a Project RPM with the Audio Technica cartridge. On the turntable, I have followed the same path as with a power amplifier. I don't like having mechanical connections. So the thin wire is going through the tone arm from the cartridge down to the base of the turntable are directly soldered to the interconnects. There was a, also an audible improvement by not using any RCA contacts here. As a phono preamp, I'm using a Vincent, a PHO701. Last but not least, the speakers. I'm using a pair of Focal C800. I built them approximately 15 years ago out of a kit, and during 2019, I renovated them. And the upgrades consisted of some new components to the crossover boards. I substituted the old electrolytic capacitors with new ones from Mundorf and also the sugar lump style of resistors were substituted by resistors from Mundorf. They look like a small tube. And also I substituted a film capacitor. The new one is from Janssen. I also substituted the internal cables and as a finishing touch I installed ribbon tweeters from Monocore. This model is RBT1000. All joints are soldered. On the rear of the speakers I installed proper binding posts and as you can see B wiring is not a problem so I really can take advantage of the monoblocks. Another difference that comes to mind regarding the performance of the upgraded power amplifiers is that I noted that, especially at the higher frequencies, the sonic performance had improved dramatically. Let's say that you're listening to Symphony No. 9 by Beethoven. During the final 10 minutes of this piece, there is a lot of voices and also a very high flute. And before the alteration, the higher frequencies sounded a bit strained and after the alteration the high frequencies came out very nicely. So all in all, to me this is definitely a very good improvement. My plan is to make a second video where I take these power amplifiers one step further. For the moment, thank you for watching and bye for now.